Hi everyone. Um, due to a few requests, I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and make um, the baby leg tutorial for baby legs that look realistic. Um, the tools that you're ne you're going to need are a, a nice clean uh, fondant mat, workspace. Um, you can use parchment paper even, as long as you have a clean surface to work on. Um, you're going to need flesh toned um, fondant, and then you're going to need tools out of the, the fondant kit. This is what I normally use. Um, you're going to need your number one, number three, number four, number seven. And if, if you feel like you want to round stuff out a little bit better, you can use a number eight as well. Um, you don't have to, but it, it's a preference kind of thing. Um, and, the, and the baby legs that I, I'm talking about are not like your typical legs that you see around a uh, a baby bottom cake. They're they're more realistic, um, so that you can get a, a better look at it. It's one solid piece um, instead of using uh, piece together uh, fondant. All right, so we're gonna get started. You want to take your fondant. Make sure you have clean hands, of course. Um, I know that it's kind of a no-no um, if you're gonna sell something to somebody. Um, this particular uh, moment in time I'm, I'm not making this for anyone so um, you want to make sure that you can have it in a round enough ball to where you can see all the lines and the indents you want to try to work those out as much as possible um, before you start I know it's kind of impossible to get most of those out as much as you probably feel that you should um, somewhat it doesn't really matter um, because you just you just want to roll it like this into a cylindrical shape and a lot of the leg doesn't show um, on the baby cakes anyways uh, so anyhow so you roll it into a cylindrical shape and I'm going to use the broadest end of this um, to form the foot and what I do is just just visualize in your head what what kind of what does a foot look like and you just kind of work it down just with your fingers um, just the general shape of where the toes are um, the ball of the foot where the, the ankle is the heel all that kind of stuff just work it up until you've got a decent foot shape going um, it, it's not gonna look perfect right off the bat um, you do have to continue to work it throughout the process. Alrighty, so starting from here, we're going to go with the number one um, out of the fondant tool kit. Um, it's also a gum paste kit, not, not to confuse anybody. Um, we're going to go ahead and make the indentations for the toes. Um, make sure you make five of them, of course, because there are five toes on everybody's feet. Um, so you want to go slightly bigger for the big toe and then kind of go in where you would expect the toes to be kind of just space them out how you think the toes would sit. And then I like to go under here and just kind of make the divots for underneath the toes. That way you've kind of got a de definition of where everything starts and stops. Um, and then do the same on the sides. Kind of just gives you that, that defining edge of where everything goes. Um, and then I, I switch up to the number seven, um, the, the sharp end here to cut all the way through because you're going to want to define where each and every toe is. There is space between each toe. There is a definite definition of there being each toe as an individual. And then you want to kind of just pull up on the fondant because this will, this will help you separate the toes better. Um, 
and just work them down. Um, you might have lines um, kind of in them from the tools, but that can all be worked out. Just make sure that you've got enough, enough depth there that you can tell um, where the toes are. Um, it'll, it'll give you a, a better idea of what you're doing. Um, that way you can see it a little bit better. Um, and then from there we just kind of keep shaping because you want the toes to be more rounded, which is when I start using my number three because I can kind of get in those crevices and kind of curve them a little bit. And if you can't see what I'm doing, I'm just kind of rounding out in between the toes. So that each toe kind of has that, that defining roundness to it. Um, and then again after that, you just want to kind of pull up gently. Um, push them together a little bit. Kind of keep working them to where, you know, they've got that, that defining roundness to them that you can tell that they're toes. And I'm sorry for, for sounding so horrible here, but I, I have never made a tutorial before. This is my very first one. Um, try, trying to do right, right by everybody here. So hopefully it's easy enough to follow that you can understand um, what I'm doing here. I'm just, just kind of working around the toes um, to get them more of a definitive shape. And I know the foot looks really fat and really goofy right now, but we'll work past that. Um, and then I'm, I'm back to the number one. Um, just kind of add that definition back in there uh, where those, those lines were for the, for the toes when they meet the feet. And then I go back to the number seven tool. And I add the lines. Um, hopefully you can see good enough. Um, I kind of add the lines that that go down here in between the toes to kind of give it a little bit more definition, a little bit more uniqueness um, for realistic realistic measures, I guess you could call it. Um, and then after I've done that, I kind of want to pull up some more, kind of round it, perfect that foot a little bit. <laughs> Make it look more like a baby foot. Just kind of keep working with the, the fondant as you go. Working with fresh fondant is normally um, a little easier because it's softer. It's a little bit more pliable. Um, this fondant is three days old. It's not it's not horribly horribly hard or anything. It's just gotten actually just to the right consistency. That's that's really workable. Um, so, okay, and then just, just kind of working up to where you're, you're building that foot up to where you can tell it's a foot um, more and more. And you're, if you feel comfortable enough, you can roll to kind of elongate that a little bit so you have a little bit more room between the foot and the upper leg. And I like to take my fingers and just kind of feel um, to round. Um, that way you kind of get an idea of what you're doing here. Um, then I'm back to the number one tool. And I'm going to make the, uh, the little toenails. Which, you know, that's probably really difficult to see. But what I do is I just gently, gently push down on the fondant right here, on the, the tips of the toes kind of make just a slight indentation it's it's nothing major just make sure that you're you're pressing very gently you're not 
overexerting your, your energy when it comes to that. Just make those little indentations to where it kind of de just defines where, where the little toenail would be. And then just kind of pull up a little bit more. And those, those little toes are, are coming into shape. Um, you're going to want to press and make sure that everything is, is lining up the way that you want it to. And right now, I, I typically just kind of keep working with my hands for a little while um, just to make sure that I'm getting the shape right. Um, you want the heel to be more rounded instead of so, so squarish. Um, try to work around the whole piece of fondant. Um, a lot of the times what you're going to do, let's see, the side with the big toe is going to lay flat or slightly tilted. Um, so a lot of what you're, you're working on, on the end with the big toe, it is probably not going to be seen anyhow because of how they lay on the cakes. Um, depending on how you decide to do it. Um, then I'm going to start working on the knee just to give it a little bit of definition of where everything starts and stops. You just want to give it just that slight bend. You don't want it to be overly bearing on where the knee is because babies aren't really naturally defined very well. They're pretty chubby. so. Kind of give it a slight, slight kneecap. You don't want to do anything over the top because, like I said, it, babies are—they've got that chub on there that it kind of hides some of their joints and stuff a little bit better. Um, and then of course, you know, once you've got that that little knee kind of worked in there, I don't know if you can see that well. Um, just make sure that you're you're keeping that that area rounded. And then I'm going to work on the ankle too. And this is when I pull out my number three um, tool. I start pressing and rolling, just gently rolling ever so lightly. Um, this will kind of give it that indentation of, okay, well, there's an ankle. You know, that, that definitiveness of it coming to a different spot. You want to do this slowly and steadily, not rush into it. And then continue to roll like on the inside. You're going to want to make sure that you make that, that definitive markings of, and just keep rolling it. It's, it's really simple to just gently roll. You want to make it very definitive of, okay, well, that's where the leg starts and the foot stops. You don't want to overdo it, um, otherwise you'll have a very interesting looking baby foot, I think. But just, just kind of gently roll over it. If you don't feel comfortable with how it's looking, you can always press down on it to kind of get the meditations out. Um, but this is how I typically do um, my forming, is just roll it gently and just round it out. And then being that I did all that, it pushed some of the fondant down. So you want to push that down into the foot and just kind of elongate the foot a little bit. And then you can use your, your number one again to kind of push a lot of that back in there where it seems like it's moving a little bit. Um, just because of all that, that you just did to it, it's it's going to stretch, it's going to kind of have a little bit of seam to it. But you keep pressing um, just enough to where you can feel the thickness feels more more like a foot with feel instead of an over over thickness. Um, I mean you want it to to be decently thick but not overly thick.
and just kind of work it. Um, as far as the, uh, the markings on the, the bottoms of the feet, they're simple enough to do. You take the number seven and just lightly drag it across the bottom of the foot. You, you don't have to do anything real, real major, just kind of enough to give it markings like it's a foot and then you can kind of rub that down so it's not, it's not real, real defined on there, just enough to give it the impression of, of having the marks on the skin. Um, if you don't, don't like how that looks, you can always go back and just kind of round it too. Um, it's, it's all preference, I think. Um, after I've got that done, I, I'll come back to the, the in-between area of the knee. Um, I like to make sure that it looks like it's folded. in a natural, quote unquote, natural position. Um, and then I'll, I'll go back to that number three tool and just kind of press in there. Press and pull, press and pull. It gives it that, that look of, okay, well there's skin that's just kind of folded and collapsed in there. It's, it's just, it's bent. It, it just gives you that idea of a leg, uh, of a leg being bent. Um, And then I'll, I'll kind of come back up and kind of do this, the pointy end of the number three. And just kind of give a little definition back into where that ankle is. Because it's a little bit more difficult to see it. Um, It takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of time to, to get it perfect. I'm, I'm a perfectionist, so I go back over it at least five times before I, I'm happy. <laughs> um, but for this tutorial, I won't put you guys through that. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit more than, than needs to be done, I think. But I like to clean, clean up the toes a little bit. that number four tool again. Just kind of go through and just kind of clean them up a little bit to where you, you don't have all that in between. Um, you can ask, actually use the number one as well. It kind of smooths it out a little bit better. Got one of my, my little toenails, little cockeyed. Sorry, guys. But yeah, that's that's basically just just it. You don't have to do a lot of, of fussiness with it. Um, it's relatively simple. Um, these typically are laid. What I use um, to support them and let them dry is uh, one of the Wilton ball pan. Um, just one half of it, just laid around there. Let it rest on there. Let it kind of harden a little bit and then if you find any problem areas just kind of go back over and you can if you if it's still soft enough you can still press on those areas and work some problems out but that is pretty much it for the tutorial I mean there's not a whole lot more I could tell you guys what to do um, you can work on it perfect it um, I guess the one thing that I probably should show you is that um, you know most baby feet lay um, they do have the indentation that goes up, which that's that's when this uh, number eight comes in handy. Um, the smaller smaller ball after you use your number one to press up on the inside of the foot to make it kind of rounded underneath there, because this is going to be laying down anyhow, so it's not going to matter real dramatically about what it looks like when you pick it up. Um, 
but I take the little rounder and I just kind of squeeze it underneath there and just kind of round it out as much as I can. Give it that look of definitiveness um, to where it's rounded. I know it kind of looks ugly, but it, it gives it that, that look of, of laying there instead of just laying just a flat foot down. Um, it'll give it more of that, that arch effect that most people like to see. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Hopefully it wasn't too hard to follow. I'm really horrible at talking, so I'm going to call it a day and hopefully everyone can follow this tutorial without an issue. Thanks everyone. Bye.